This is the new BMW i5, a high-tech, high-performance version of the new BMW 5 Series. Specifically, it's the i5 M60 X Drive, which has been beefed up by the M Performance division to make it better to look at and apparently better to drive. Today, we're going to get under the skin of this £97,000 luxury saloon to let you know exactly what it's like to drive. It just feels lovely. Poke around some of its best features. Okay, yep, that seems to be working. There's a man catching a fish. And of course, let you know whether you should actually buy it. Before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping. I just want to say that Auto Trader can help you with every single aspect of your car buying journey. We'll help you buy, sell, and lease your next car. And we'll even tell you what your car is worth with an instant valuation. Go to the website, enter your reg number and your mileage, and we'll give you an accurate valuation based on real world data from millions of different cars. The link is down below. Right, on with the show. Here's the basics you need to know about the i5 M60. It uses an 81 kilowatt hour battery pack for a range of 315 miles. It will charge at 205 kilowatts and can go from zero to 80% in around 30 minutes. And it's fast, very, very fast. This car uses two electric motors, one up front and one at the rear, with a total output of 601 horsepower. BMW say that's good for a top speed of 142 miles an hour and a 0 to 62 time of 3.8 seconds. Obviously, we are nowhere near an autobahn right now, but I feel like we should test the acceleration. So just bear with me a second. Launch control is very dramatic in this car. You go into sport mode, foot on the brake, foot on the accelerator, at which point the car will begin to vibrate, the seat belt will tighten, and all hell will break loose. There we go, seat belt's on, launch control active, and then we send it. Yeah, that's a strong launch. Woo! Oh my God, that is properly quick. Wow, that's exciting. And actually, the build-up to it, the launch control kind of process is quite involving. I'd say it's probably on a par with a normal petrol car, certainly in terms of that theatre, because of the vibration and the shaking and the, the impending sense of doom that you get just before you release the brake. That's fun. The i5 M60 managed 0-62 in exactly 3.8 seconds, as advertised. Not as quick as the Tesla Model S Plaid, which only cost a few thousand pounds more, but it's worth pointing out that the Tesla is not available in the UK in right-hand drive, and the i5 has plenty more going for it than just painful acceleration. So BMW will make a petrol, a hybrid, and this all-electric version of the new 5 Series, and all of them look pretty similar, but in the case of the i5, the grill is pretty smooth and you can get that in various different designs, but there's a couple of things on this that do stand out for me. First and foremost, the iconic glow lighting around the edge of the grill. That looks really fascinating. Some people might think that's a bit too bling, but it does look amazing, especially at night. If you look even closer, you'll find this little forward-facing camera, very handy for parking. We've also got this black square for the advanced driver assistance systems. I think that's fairly well integrated. Then you've got all these black elements around the side, which can be swapped out for carbon if you go for the optional carbon pack, and then the headlights. Now, from a distance, they don't look like quad lights, which you'll expect on a BMW. But actually, if you get closer, you'll see they are quad lights. It's just that they're dominated by these very distinctive vertical DRLs and have a lovely little splash of blue on the inside. Nice touch. The i5 is marginally bigger than the previous 5 Series. Wheel sizes are available from 18 to 21 inches, including these very intricate and very difficult to clean 20s, covering red or blue M Sport brake calipers. It features the familiar M-style door mirrors, flush illuminating door handles front and rear, as well as an embossed 5 logo in the D-pillar. Nothing too flashy, but very handsome in its own right. Around the back, it is typical 5 Series, nice little pert bum, understated rear lights, a little bit of a plastic diffuser down the bottom, which I think can be finished in carbon if you go for the carbon pack. You get this nice little boot lid spoiler and then the badges i5 and m60 i think they should have called this the mi5 because that would be quite gangster wouldn't it especially in this color very very uh murdered out anyway you'll be getting very familiar with this diffuser down here because it's got this little function where you sort of kick at it and the boot opens 
Sometimes it opens. If you do it again. See, this is why you'll be getting familiar with it because it, okay, now it's closing. The idea is that it will help you if you've got your hands full, but usually it's just better if you use the normal handle. Once you're open, you've got space for 490 litres of cat food. Forgot to give my cats that. In the petrol versions, you get 520 litres, although in the electric, you do get more underfloor storage than in the petrols for your charge cables, etc. And you can drop down the rear seats if you're loading long objects quite easily. Yeah, nice boot. Let me try that again. Yeah. And that's quiet, isn't it? That's the quietest boot opening mechanism I've ever heard. Nice. In the back seats, you'll find a decent amount of space, albeit with less tech than its larger i7 cousin. Legroom is good thanks to a cutout behind the front seats, although the floor is a little bit too high, making it hard to get a comfortable seating position. Headroom is decent though, again thanks to cutouts above your head, and the car has a fold-down armrest with cup holders and a manually operated window blind. There are additional digital controls for the aircon and rear heated seats, plus two USB-C ports and a couple more USB-C ports located in the seat backs just above a port for accessories like an iPad holder, which children definitely won't jam unwanted items like food and trash into. So the design up at the front of the car is pretty good. It's quite understated, but the thing that gets me is the level of quality in this car. Everything feels really nicely glued down, screwed down. It doesn't feel like it was put together by some child in, in art class, as is the case on some of this car's rivals. Not gonna mention Tesla or Mercedes with their EQ range, but the quality is definitely there. Very nice. One of the highlights for me is this massive screen up here. Don't know how big it is. 27 inches, don't know, massive, but it's got the infotainment system up there. It's also got a driver display over here for you and an enormous head up display for the driver, which at night looks like you're watching a 37 inch television while you're driving along. It's a bit much, but it does make you feel special. Another thing that makes you feel special is this interaction bar, this kind of crystal glass effect that runs from the passenger door across the dashboard and across the driver door. Now, it does two things. One is ambient lighting, and the second is it shows you what drive mode you happen to be in. So if I go into my, my modes setting and I put it into sport mode, you'll see the interaction bar glows red to match the red on the screen. If I switch modes and go into efficient, for example, then it will turn blue to match the blue on the display. And again, it looks absolutely sensational. I think that's one of the best things about this car. I also really like this crystal arrangement. This is an optional extra, but you get a crystal knob for the iDrive controller, a crystal knob for your volume button, crystal for the drive select, and crystal for the start stop button. All of it looks and feels fantastic. You've also got physical buttons on the steering wheel. Many of BMW's rivals go down the route of having capacitive buttons, but by having physical buttons, it gives you a little bit more control over the car, I think. It makes you feel like you're actually doing something rather than hammering away at random little touchscreens that aren't really responding in the way that they should. Speaking of touchscreens not being that responsive, this is quite responsive, but all of your functions live in this display and it can get a bit much. For example, one thing I don't like is the fact that to adjust the vents and the climate control, you've got to press this tiny little vent icon in the middle at the bottom. And when you're driving along, that's not very easy to identify and press. There's also some inconsistency between how the touchscreen feels and how these other touchscreen buttons on the interaction bar feel. For example, right here, you can see that everything is super responsive. But then if I go on these buttons down here, they don't respond at all unless you press them hard. So you actually physically push to get the hazard controls to work, physically push to get your demisting to work, and it doesn't feel as consistent as it could. There's another thing I don't like, and that is you've got two spaces for holding your mobile phone, but only one of them on the driver's side actually does wireless charging, which is strange because even on a Tesla, you get two wireless charging points. But you do get two USB-C ports and two cup holders. But oh, look at that, terrible amount of space in the center console. There's almost not enough room to put a chocolate bar in there. And when you've got a car that's executive size, you'd expect a bit more storage. Also, look at this a massive transmission tunnel with no storage. This car doesn't even have a transmission. What's the point? BMW, I'm gonna give you like a 7.5 for the interior. Quality, amazing, practicality, not so much. 
first thing you notice when you're driving in an i5 M60 is how premium everything feels. All the controls have a lovely weight to them. And that includes the steering wheel. It's adaptive, so at low speeds, it's quite responsive, which is ideal for maneuvering, but then at higher speeds, it becomes less responsive in order that the car doesn't feel too hyperactive. By default, the accelerator is very smooth, so it's very, very simple to drive this car without it feeling jerky, except when you pull the boost paddle and that gives you full torque, in which case it does feel extremely violent. It's a bit like accelerating in an ice car in first gear. It gives you 10 seconds of maximum torque, which is pretty much all you need to complete an overtaking move or just to get the hell out of Dodge. The noise it makes depends on what mode you're in. I'll go into sport with a gesture, 505, that goes into sport. And then when you accelerate, it makes this incredible kind of space aged, I don't know what it is, but it sounds, it sounds bloody good. And that's not the only cool noise the car makes. If I put it into expressive mode and then accelerate, that is a sensational noise, isn't it? It's very much like a, a movie score, which makes sense because these noises were composed by the legendary Hans Zimmer, who created some of the most iconic soundtracks in movie history. And he's doing the same thing for BMW. M Adaptive Suspension Pro comes as standard on the i5 M60. This lowers the ride height by around five millimeters for a more sporty look and feel, but not at the detriment of comfort. The i5 isn't as soft or as comfortable as the i7, but it's very smooth and has a luxurious feel. Not only is the ride quality in this car very good, but the body control is also exceptional. So the M60 comes with adaptive suspension as standard, and it has active 48 volt anti-roll stabilization, which means in the bends, it stays nice and flat when you corner. On the subject of corners, the M60 also has rear wheel steer. It's not quite as intrusive as you get on some of its rivals. The rear wheels only turn by 2.5 degrees in the opposite direction to the front wheels, but that's just enough to help the car feel more dynamic in the bends to get it turned in. It's got really good balance. It's friendly. It's got a tremendous amount of grip in the bends. The best thing I can say about it is that it feels like a BMW. A lot of these big, heavy electric cars can feel slightly homogenous, very similar in their approach, but this definitely has that BMW DNA. It's also got more power in the rear motor versus the motor in the front, so you get that rear bias feeling pushing you as you exit a corner. So the car is fast and it drives very well, but I wanted to show you some of the technology because it is very interesting. I didn't say good, I said interesting. And that's because there's a lot going on here. So you've got Apple CarPlay, which is done wirelessly and looks fantastic because the screen is so high res, but then you've got dozens of applications built into the screen. Um, and some of it is, um, is quite useful. So I'll give you the useful ones first of all. You've got YouTube, you might have heard of it. Um, you've got ZapMap in CarPlay, which helps you find local charging stations. You've got Ringo to help you pay for parking, Spotify, music, playback, etc. But then you've also got things like video playback. There's a video app. So you tap that, you can go into um, this movie system, which lets you see some of the worst movies ever known to man. I'm talking not even straight to DVD, but straight to BMW. Laundry Day illuminate the torturer i've literally never heard of a single one of these movies but let's <laughs> let's play one and see um what the actual playback is like yeah that seems to be working absolutely fine only problem is the film isn't formatted for this display so it doesn't fill the screen but are you going to watch it anyway probably not there's another feature that you're probably not going to use though and that is the selfie mode so watch this take a selfie Great. Say cheese in three, two, one. Okay, and now I'll be able to see what I look like when I'm taking selfies in a BMW. Look at that. I don't know why it takes selfies, but it does It does take selfies in case you want to take selfies while you're in your car. Um, more useful is the BMW app. 
So one of the things this can do is allow you to activate the heating and set the climate control. It will also turn on the cameras in the car so you can keep an eye on the kids or the dog if you've left them in the car or you can activate the exterior cameras so if there's someone in your garden for example and you think they're breaking into your car you can turn that on activate the cctv and see a 360 bird's eye view of what's going on around the car loads of tech some of it cooler than others one other really cool piece of tech in the i5 is the fact that the car can pretty much drive itself. There's an adaptive cruise control system that will keep the car in its lane, even around bends, taking some pressure off the driver. And on the motorway, a highway assist feature that lets you take your hands off the wheel completely as long as you keep your eyes on the road. The system isn't quite here in the UK as yet. Apparently it's coming in 2024, but in the meantime, you can take advantage of the adaptive cruise control system. So the idea with that is you set the speed and then the sensors on the car, that big square one I showed you earlier, will actually lock onto the vehicle in front and match that vehicle's speed and also make sure that it sticks in the lane that it's supposed to be in. But it can also go a step further. Let's say that you're stuck behind a driver and you wanna go around them. What you can do is you can indicate and then once you look at your driver's side mirror, the car will know that you've done a check of your surroundings and it will take care of that automatic overtaking procedure. So here I am stuck behind a slower driver. I'll indicate and then I'll look in my mirror and the car will actually take care of the rest of the overtaking maneuver. Look at that, it's going around the driver in front without having to get any kind of driver intervention. That is quite cool, isn't it? But then again, when you think about it, what is the actual point? Because if I've already indicated and looked in my mirror, I've done the mirroring and the signaling, surely I can take care of the little bit of a maneuver needed to change lane. Although I guess it will make more sense when the full level two self-driving is available in the UK. Apart from that, the car is actually very lovely to drive on the motorway. It is silky smooth, and yet there is a little bit of wind noise. This doesn't have acoustic glass for some strange reason, but I can definitely forgive these things. On the whole, this is a wonderful car to sit in and cruise for miles and miles and miles. The final thing to touch on is range. BMW claim the i5 M60 will do 315 miles on the WLTP cycle, which would require an average of around 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. In my test, the car managed between two and three miles per kilowatt hour on a cool autumn day with a mixture of urban and highway driving. So expect real range to be around 160 and 250, depending on how fast you drive. The car does have a max range feature, which limits power and turns off the aircon to eke out some extra mileage. And rapid charging is reasonably quick at 205 kilowatts, meaning you can go from zero to 80% in around half an hour. Okay, so what's my verdict on the i5 M60? I think it's a brilliant car, you know. I think it's got a lot going for it. It looks good, it's got tremendous technology, mostly, anyway. It drives fantastically, it's incredibly fast, and I think more to the point, it's also a lot of fun. It feels like a much more complete package than some of its rivals like the Mercedes EQE or the Tesla Model S. Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. There are a few places that I think this car could be improved, but on the whole, it's a wonderful thing.